Good afternoon. Welcome to Gloria Day, Lutheran Church. We are gathered here this afternoon to remember and to celebrate the life of Deja Rose Mills. So I want to welcome all of the family and all of the friends of Deja here this afternoon. After this service, there will be a light reception in the fellowship hall next door to which everyone is invited. Let us begin with a word of prayer. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. O God, our Father, your beloved Son, took children into his arms and blessed them. Give us grace, we pray, that we may entrust Deja Rose Mills to your never-failing care and love, and bring us all to your heavenly kingdom through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading for this afternoon is from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 31. What then shall we say to this? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, Will he not also give us all things with him? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And our gospel reading today is from Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse 13. One day some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. He said to them, let the children come to me. Do not stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on their heads and blessed them.
animals. When she would go to the park, she would want to pet every single dog that came across her path. Her family told me that even when she was very young and just starting to learn how to speak in full sentences, she would say to each and every dog owner that she met, nice dog, nice dog, I love your dog, nice dog. So what can we say when someone who is so young and so full of life and vibrancy is taken away? Well, the fact is there are no empty platitudes that will ease the grief that Deja's family and her friends feel right now. And of course, that grief has many different expressions, all of them equally valid and equally appropriate, whether it is anger or numbness or tears or even questions like why. Why was a young life cut short? Well, I don't have the answers, but what I do know, what I can tell you, is that the very first one to grieve Deja's death was God. God grieved not for Deja. Deja is already with God. Deja is happy and at peace. But God's grief is for the ones left behind, the ones that loved her. Psalm 46 says this, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. In these words are comforts and promises that God is with us. God is present even right now. In the midst of seemingly incomprehensible tragedy, we can know that God doesn't simply understand us, but he actually joins in on our suffering. God who gave his own son up to death that we might have life understands our pain. He understands our grief at this moment. The purpose of our being here today, though, is not just to share our grief, but it is also to celebrate the hope that we have. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. That is the hope and the joy that we have today. Even as we grieve in this world, we know that one day, God will wipe away all the tears from our eyes. And that one day we will get to be reunited with everyone that we have ever lost in a better world to come. A second word that Jesus says in this gospel passage is a word of blessing. And he took the children in his arms and he placed his hands on them and he blessed them. In her life on earth, Deja was blessed. Blessed by a loving family, and blessed to be under the loving care of Jesus. Deja's family told me that she was an adventurer and an explorer. She loved to climb trees and to play <laughs> in the park and to explore the beach. And she never let anything slow her down or stop her. In the last few years, Deja had to be in the hospital a couple of times for different reasons, which is never fun, but for a child can be downright scary. But her family told me that she was always cheerful, always upbeat. In fact, one time recently when she had to go to the hospital, she had to go via an ambulance, which is intimidating for anyone, child or adult alike. But Deja's aunt told me that the first thing she said when she got to the hospital was, I got to ride in an ambulance. She was always positive. I can't help but think how significant it is that today is All Saints Day. What is a saint? A saint is a person through whom the light and the love of God shines. A person who inspires us to be better. By that definition, and according to everything that Deja's family told me, she is definitely a saint. You may know that Deja's organs were donated after her death, and her family already knows that four different organs were donated to four different children at four different hospitals whose lives will be forever changed by that gift. The third word of hope that Jesus gives us in this gospel is the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. Deja is with God in that heavenly kingdom right now. And as we look back on Deja's brief but very significant life, I'm sure each one of you has different memories. This is a time to treasure those memories, to be grateful for the happiness 
that Deja brought into your lives over the years, and to know that Deja will continue to live in the background of your lives forever here on earth, and that one day, all who have died in the faith will be reunited in God's kingdom. Amen. At this time, we will have a time for eulogies, so I would like to invite Deja's father, Andre, up for the first eulogy. I want to welcome all of you to the celebration of Deja Rosa's life. I'm going to start by reading a poem that was written by a lady that I met in the hospital where Deja was at an ICU unit. Seven of her children were all special needs children. So uh, she brought a lot of support while we were in the hospital. She wrote this the night before uh, Deja's passing. It's called The Peace in Sorrow. The Lord is my shepherd. He watches over me. Stand back by my enemies, for you can't hurt me. He is true to his word, faithful at all times. I will put my pain in his hands and relinquish it from mine. With the pain from my loss, I will trust in you, O Lord. Deliver me from sorrow and mind my own hurting heart. I'm sorry, mend my hurting heart. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Peace be with this day, for he is always in my heart. Life is like a budding rose, not forgetting the thorny stem. One day it is lost forever. And we hope with him in the end. So let us pray this soul is in heaven, the best place it can ever be, even better than here on earth with us. It's with God that peace will be. I also wanted to share with you an email that I received just a few days ago uh, from a man named Neil Donald Walsh, who is a spiritual man and uh, he uh, um, has meant a lot to me in, in my life. Um, and uh, he shared a message with me on this day. And uh, he said, on this day of your life, Andre, I believe God wants you to know that when a loved one leaves the body, it is a cause for a genuine and special joy. It can be difficult to experience this joy over the death of a loved one. And sadness is both perfectly natural and very okay. Yet know this, your beloved is celebrating the continuation, continuation day. This is the most glorious experience you could possibly imagine. It is truly heaven. And there is this, you will once again reunite with the soul of this loved one. Nor will you ever be separate, even now. For their essence flies to you at your very thought of them. I would not tell you this if it were not true. Love your friend, Neil Donald Walsh. <clears throat> there are many children here today, younger and older, that I have known for most or all of their life, and have known me for most of their life. I have been known as and called Dad, Andre Dad, Step Poppy, and Uncle Andre. I have loved all these children as if they were my own. I've been happy with all my adopted children for over 25 years. And I thought that was a plan that God had for me to be there for those who needed me, or just wanted to be a part of my life. My first wife and I lost a child during pregnancy, and that was many years ago. And after that, I never thought 
that I would be blessed with another one. Then finally, when I was 43 years old, on June 23rd, 2006, God did just that. He blessed me with a precious gift. A little baby girl. We've all come to know as Deja Rose. She was born at Mary Birch Women's Hospital in San Diego, California. She has touched each and every one of us, every one of our lives, in one way or another, for the last eight years. I don't know if it was her big blue eyes, her pretty little smile, or her sweet personality. But she could always get a complete and total stranger whom she had just met to fall in love with her within just the first couple of minutes of meeting them and talking with them. And sometimes she didn't even need to say a word. She will always be in my heart as I imagine she will be in all of yours. My question to God now is, how do I continue on in my life? Or even start over without her in it? But she is in it. With every breath that I take, every thought that comes to my mind. I've been praying what I can do to help her memory live on with others as well. I know that I wanted to help support the Epilepsy Foundation as she had been struggling with seizures in the last three years. I still do believe in that, but my heart and my prayers to God have taken me somewhere else. For those of you who don't know, upon Deja's passing, her mother and I knew that she would want to give to others and to share as she had done in her life with others. So we didn't hesitate to have her heart and several other of her organs donated to other children who otherwise might not have made it so that they may live on and that she would live on in them. I suddenly knew what I needed to do, what I felt that she would want me to do. And that was let her spirit live on, not only in the children that she saved, but by their story and the stories of, of all the lives that she had saved. I've been praying for these children, and now I want their stories and their pictures, along with Asia's, to be put on a website to help promote awareness for organ donation and to show how one life can save so many. I hope to see others encouraged by this to contribute their stories as well. She is, she's not done giving. This is her day, honey. Remember, it's all about you, Gage Rose. Ted Rose.
Zeit, der hat die Zeit nicht mehr zu gehen. Wir schauen das Box. Even at the time when she could not read yet, she picked up a book and leafed through it looking at pictures. And her father and I would read to her and explain pictures and um, uh, finish the story. I took the time when she started to read herself. And um, she had this little Bible story book like half the and then um, she would go and flip the pages and pick something and start reading and then she could not explain the word or she couldn't read it and said, hold on, you do it. And then we would take turns. She said, I read one page, but you read the next page. And so the author telling the story and she was very animated about it. She would uh, just gesture some things, tell me what was the story about. And um, among all the favorite things she had, from Disney books to um, other children's books, to this little um, child Bible stories, I picked one that she was particularly fond of, and it's called A Fishy Trip. And um, it is, of course, the Yuna and the Whale. And she would page and look at the picture, and then she would start reading, and the next one, I would have to do it. And, um, I would just to give you a short quote of a very simple childlike version. Um, God said to Jonah, go to Nirvi. He said, the people are there doing bad things. I want you to tell them to spot. Jonah decided not to obey. He thought he could run away from God. Jonah got on a boat that was sailing away from Nineveh. He went to a room in the bottom part of the ship and he fell asleep there. And there are some real simple pictures about him sleeping in the boat. And so then on the next page, uh, we are that um, God knew where Jonah was and he sent the big storm. The boat bounced around on the waves. The sailors were afraid their boat was going to sink. They woke Jonah. If you believe in God, you had better pray. We may drown in this bad storm, they told Jonah. Jonah knew that he was the reason for the storm, because of his disobedience. Throw me overboard and the storm will stop, he told the sailors. They did not want to toss Jonah into the sea, but they did want the storm to stop. So they did what Jonah asked and threw him into the stormy sea. <coughs> the storm stopped suddenly, and the sailors saw Jonah would drown. But God sent a big fish that swallowed Jonah right up. Jonah lived inside the fish for three days. He had plenty of time to think about how he had disobeyed God. Jonah prayed, I'm sorry for disobeying. If you let me live, I will go to Nineveh. The big fish spat Jonah out on the shore. Then Jonah had a flight for Nineveh. He told the people to stop doing bad things. They listened to Jonah and started <coughs> obeying God. This is the end of the fishy tale. And um, <coughs> I liked it over and over again to look at the picture and asking questions, what happens when you are disobedient, and we talked about it. And um, I thought I'd share this with you um, so you know a little bit about her as she was growing into 
from a listener to a reader. Thank you. hard to find the right words. So let me start by borrowing someone else's, some words that touched me. We will never be the same as we were before the loss, but ever so much better for having had something so great to lose. Those of you who have children know that you can get lost in their needs and desires, and you can even lose a little bit of control of the life that you thought you had planned. You find yourself singing silly songs while you're riding in the car. You're reading stories at bedtime that rhyme and have talking dogs and frogs, always delivering colorful, positive messages. Or you're watching programs and movies with pink ponies, mermaids, and snowmen, as well as animated characters who suddenly break out in song. And you watch them over and over and over, all for the love of the children. So it's no wonder that their world seems to drive yours. And as with many children, we would comment amongst us as we were planning a day to Deja and say, it's not all about you, you know. But indeed today, it is all about you, Deja Rose. However, I first have to acknowledge my brother Andre for his love and dedication to his daughter. He wanted and waited for years to have a child and when this little bundle wrapped in pink came into his life, he then began to transform. At first he was nervous and uncertain how to handle this delicate little being, but he quickly caught on. And wisely he turned to many friends, and they were glad to help babysit and give assistance. And they even made play dates wherever they were, so that Deja would feel like she belonged whenever she was visiting. As a person, my brother matured and accepted his awesome task of parenthood, and I saw him become a more loving and caring person who would do anything for his little girl. He came around the family more often and entrusted both my mother and myself to assist him with the ordinary needs of this energetic little girl. Along the way, we were blessed with many of those wonderful moments you have when you're watching a child grow and seeing the world through their innocent eyes. I remember one occasion I was reading a story to Deja after she begged, just one more, please. So I picked up another of her books. I think it was something like Dr. Seuss with all these funny characters. And the faces on the flowers were smiling when the sun came out. And she looked at me and she said, I know why God created sunshine. And I asked, why is that? She said, so we can grow and be happy. I thought there was an awful lot of wisdom in that answer. I think in, in passing of Deja, we think of her as an angel among angels. And that I believe she is. But of course, before she received her wings, she was like any other eight-year-old child. Energetic, rambunctious, curious, inquisitive, sometimes stubborn, sometimes moody and maybe a little bit messy when she ate. Eating meals with her was sometimes like one of those crazy tea parties from Alice in Wonderland, where everything was either too big or too small, a little topsy-turvy. She would ask for a piece of toast, which my mom would generously smear with jam. And for some reason, she would proceed to flip it upside down and eat it backwards. I didn't understand why. All the while she was oblivious to the globs of sticky stuff that were dripping on her clothes and in her hair and on the chair. And of course, we were frustrated, but we couldn't help but be amused at the same time. She also had so much energy, the best way for all of us was to go to the park. She would play for hours at the park. And at first, when she was young, she was afraid. She would cling to my neck and didn't want to go on the swing by herself. She'd go with me, not by myself. So I would gently set her on the swing, and we would swing slowly, ever so slowly. Not too fast, not too fast. But later, she got bold and started on her own, going up and down the slides and trying out the, the monkey bars. And with lots of practice and reassurance, she could handle them all. 
Later in school, she had a little trouble keeping up with the other kids. Reading was difficult, and then we found out that she needed eye surgery, and she was fitted for glasses. And like so many other children, she also struggled to stay still and focus and do simple tasks. And that's when we started to learn about her seizure disorder. Um, but even throughout that scary event, uh, like Pastor explained, when she had to go to the hospital for the first time, it was amazing how unafraid she was. When I talked to her, she said, Aunt Ancha, I got to ride in an ambulance. There were lights flashing, and people were so nice to me. It just seems that through it all, she was a cheerful child. She gave love freely, but she also wanted to help others. At the park, the many, many times at the park, she would conquer the wings and then turn around and say, I can show you, I can show you. And at the pool, she worked so hard just to be able to hold her breath. And once she could hold her breath for 12 counts and master the dog paddle, no sooner she learned that, she turned around and was trying to teach other children how to swim. My brother, often a volunteer, has gone on many walks to help raise awareness and funds for breast cancer and for AIDS and other causes, and he brought Deja right along with him. So he taught her at an early age the importance of giving and sharing. And as we shared earlier, during his time of grief, he and Deja's mom made the difficult decision to donate her organs and tissue. And we keep bringing this up because we are so touched by the organization and the people and how wonderful they were to our family. And they let us in on a little bit of information. A seven-year-old girl in Arizona received her heart and now can live. A two-year-old boy received one of her kidneys, and two other people, whose names we don't know yet, received a liver and a kidney, and all of them can now lead healthy lives. She was much loved and will be terribly missed, but with this kind of gift, we know in our hearts that Deja Rose lives on. Thank you. <coughs> anyone else who would like to share a thought or a memory about Deja, you are invited to do so, otherwise we will have a brief time of silent reflection. I've watched her grow up, I've watched her be, 
that she um, she's in the loving arms of God. And he's gonna keep her safe for us until we all get to go see her again. And uh, thank you all for being here, it means a lot. <laughs>